Today we're going to dissect the rookie cards of the 2021 National League MVP, Bryce Harper. Let's do this. What is up everyone? Victor, the rookie card specialist here on YouTube and welcome. Well, congratulations are in order to the 2021 MVP winners, Shohei Otani and Bryce Harper. Now there was some slight controversy for Harper winning it because some felt Juan Soto should have won it, but Tatis Jr. also got a lot of votes as well. But the points were tallied and Bryce Bam Bam Harper takes it for the win. A couple of things I want us to keep in mind before we look at his rookie cards is that Harper debuted in the major leagues on April 28th, 2012. Now, as a refresher, let's keep in mind that the Ten Commandments of the Rookie Card states that a rookie card can only be released after a player has made a pro-level roster. So if we look at his numbers, we'll notice that at the end of 2021, he just completed his 10th season in the league, and he just recently turned 29 years old. Also keep in mind, he's the 2012 Rookie of the Year, a two-time MVP winner, a six-time All-Star, and a two-time Silver Slugger. The cherry on top, he was the home run derby winner in 2018. Now, speaking of home runs, he currently has 267 career homers. Add to that 1,273 hits and 752 RBIs. My point, he's definitely on the road to the hall. Personally, I don't understand why people don't pay more attention to things like this. A long, long time ago, I stopped prospecting for rookies and started prospecting for Hall of Famers. This has a much, much better ROI, in my opinion. But to drop four, five, or even $10,000 on a rare, shiny rookie card of a rookie, of a rookie that hasn't accomplished nothing is not very wise. But I'm just going to let life teach that lesson. I digress. So there's two things that I want to address very quickly. There's three or four websites out there, possibly more, that will offer you articles about rookie cards. Now, here's what you're going to get the 10 best cards of so-and-so, or the five most valuable rookie cards of whomever. But the problem I have with the 10 best rookie card articles is that it's subjective. It would be better if they titled it the 10 best rookie cards of so-and-so, in my opinion. The problem with the five most valuable rookies is that you're isolating a large portion of collectors. You're speaking only to people who can afford that kind of card, and this type of high-end content, unfortunately, seems to be in the majority. But the most egregious error in these articles, in my opinion, is when you open them up to read them, many times they're going to list cards that are inserts, subsets, and parallel cards. So the list of cards that they offer are not only subjective and high-end, but they're also incorrect. The reason? Their list of rookie cards is not based on principles. Their foundation is made of sand. Therefore, a rookie card is whichever way the wind is blowing today. This is why on my website, truerookiecards.com, I take pride in sharing with you all of the players' rookie cards. If they have 50, then all 50 are going to be shown to you in alphabetical order, along with photos of both front and back of the cards. I'll show them all to you and let you decide which ones are your top 10. Now, these are the little things that I wanted to offer on my website because I didn't want to do what everybody else is doing. My articles are under no deadline and the list of rookie cards that I'm going to show you are going to be 100% true rookie cards. Also, there's something that's really been holding me back that I need to get off my chest so that I can progress this YouTube channel and my website. I've, I've never addressed it before, but it's time that I do. My issue is with Panini baseball cards. Now, they do make some really cool card designs, especially with the parallels. I understand why people like them. I've opened up a couple of retail boxes that I received as a gift a couple of years ago, and I really enjoyed myself opening up those cards. However, when I'm trying to determine rookie cards, I filter the cards through the boundaries that have been established. Friends, I hope you'll still love me. But listen, Panini baseball cards are not true rookie cards. They are rookie year cards. 
I take no pleasure in saying that. It actually pains me to say it. But here's what I'm going to do. In the description down below, I'm going to leave you a link to my article and my YouTube video titled, The Ten Commandments of the Rookie Card. The first five commandments were given to the industry by the Players Association in 2005. The PA basically stepped in and said, we're tired of hearing complaints and we're tired of the rookie card shenanigans that card manufacturers are playing. So from this day forward, here's how it's going to be. The second set of five commandments is what the hobby has determined what a rookie card is since the early 80s. I like to call this portion of it past practice. Rule number one of the Ten Commandments of the Rookie Card says, a rookie card must be licensed by both the league and the Players Association. Friends, pajama cards have little to do with logos, in my opinion, and everything to do with licensing. Panini has exploited a loophole in the system that flirts with a lawsuit, at the very least. My wish is that they would have just stayed in their lane. Everybody has a fully licensed sport. Why do you have to cross over into baseball? So when I sit down to verify rookie cards of a certain player, I must in good conscience follow the guidelines and not popular opinion. Now, you might be saying the guidelines are wrong and that needs to change. Well, I'm okay with that, you see, but the hobby doesn't have the authority to change licensing contracts. We have influence, but not authority. We can petition fanatics, the leagues, and the players' association to perhaps make up, uh, uh, make appropriate changes to the rookie cards, but we're going to need it in writing. Until then, when I'm trying to determine true rookie cards, I must, in good conscience, follow guidelines set by the PA and past practice. I know it's a tough pill to swallow. You may or may not agree, but as I mentioned earlier, I really struggled with making that announcement because I know that it rubs the fur in the opposite direction. I beg you to, at the very least, consider what I'm saying to be true. With all that said, let's go over to the computer and look at some Bryce Harper rookie cards. First, let me say that I've never seen such a hodgepodge of rookie cards in my life. If you were to look at the articles and hobby publications over the years on Bryce Harper rookie cards, what you'll find is a conglomeration of shenanigans. Kind of makes me feel like this guy. So I want us to keep this visual in mind. The concept is to take the cards in question and filter them through the Ten Commandments of the rookie card. Then we funnel them down into one of four identifiers. So earlier, we determined that Bryce Harper debuted in the MLB on April 28th, 2012. So his rookie cards will be found in 2012 product. Now, I want us to start with his 2011 cards, and you're going to see some of the more popular ones here. But here's something very interesting that I want you to know. In 2011, card manufacturers produced 226 different cards of Bryce Harper. A proper identifier for these 226 cards would be pre-rookie cards because they were released prior to Harper's MLB debut of 2012. But wait, there's more. In 2010, 15 cards were made of Bryce Harper. In 2009, 31 cards were manufactured. And it goes all the way back to 2008. Three cards were produced of Bryce Harper as well. This brings Bryce Harper's pre-rookie card total to 275. A good way to determine the rookie year on these can be found on the back of the card. Near the trademark or copyright, you're going to notice a year. For this example, a 2011 print date equates to a pre-rookie card identifier. Or you're going to notice that on the front of the card, you will not see the MLB RC logo. Why? Because, my friends... These are not rookie cards. So to reiterate, all 275 cards produced of Bryce Harper prior to his MLB debut get the PRC identifier. Regardless of rarity, regardless of opinion, legally, technically, and officially, they are not true rookie cards. Now, Bryce Harper has 513 cards produced in 2012. Please keep that in mind as we move forward. 
What concerns me at times is the thought of the hobby wanting me to be okay with all 513 cards being considered rookie cards. And some hobby enthusiasts want me to include the pre-rookie cards as well, which would bring the total to 788 total cards. So what you want me to say is that all cards produced between 2008 and 2012, all 788 of them are rookie cards. And I just can't, that just doesn't make sense to me. Let's begin with the Bowman brand as we, we start to look at the true rookie cards of Bryce Harper. Now, at times, the Bowman brand can be very difficult to understand since they have such a wide variety of brands that dovetail with prospect heavy sets. However, looking at these five wonderful cards, many online publications will show the Bowman Chrome Draft card number 10 erroneously. This is not a true rookie card. This is a parallel card within the 2012 Bowman draft. Although I acknowledge the importance of parallels within the hobby, historically, they have not been considered true rookie cards. I get into this topic in much greater detail in prior videos and articles. I'll be sure to leave you a link to that as well. Here we see four cards offered by Panini. However, because they're not properly licensed, a proper identifier would be rookie year cards. This is not my opinion. I did not make this rule. The Players Association did. Now, here's where it gets really, really dicey when we're dealing with the Topps brand. The 2012 Topps cards of Bryce Harper have been the cause of lots of debate within the hobby. Shenanigans is the only adjective I can think of to, to do this justice. However, allow me to try and explain it to you, then I'll give you my opinion. So Topps decided to include Harper as a last minute addition to the flagship top set. Since he wasn't included in the original checklist, Topps did the right thing in my opinion by releasing a press statement. The press release basically said, Harper will be added to the checklist as card number 661 and it will be a short print. 661B is an autograph version of the card which was also available through the golden giveaway. These came in a code card, it's kind of like a redemption, and they were randomly inserted into packs. And when you entered the code online, you had a chance at winning this Harper Auto. Card number 661C was the Harper card featured in factory sets. Why they did a completely different image is beyond me. And card number 662D was an image variation that came in pack form inside of the same factory set. Now, the first two, 661 A and B, are frowned upon within the hobby because of the late edition SP gimmick and redemption shenanigans, and the cost of these two are astronomical. Now, 661 Card C and D are much easier to find and are much more affordable, but image swapping didn't sit right with collectors. Also, Topps created eight different types of factory sets in 2012, and you needed the retail factory set version for your chance at 661D. I find Topps card number 661A is the true Topps flagship rookie card of Bryce Harper. Due to code cards, image swapping, and eight factory set variations, I consider 661 B, C, and D as rookie year cards. Also, I feel Topps was perhaps trying to dodge bullets, but I can respect the fact that they communicated the additions in a press release. Here we have the finest rookie card and the Topps Chrome. They meet all the criteria for a true rookie card designation. Now, the variation short print was one in 912 packs or one in three cases, but they only short printed 20 cards. That makes this a short printed parallel card. Taking the gimmick a step further, out of the 20 cards in the parallel set, only Harper has a refractor parallel. Bottom line, longtime hobby standards state extremely short printed cards of parallels should not be considered rookie cards. Here we have the Allen and Ginter, the Archives, the Five Star, and the Topps Heritage. Four amazing cards here of Bryce Harper. All of them are true rookie cards. Here I want us to start with the Topps Mini. 
They were slightly smaller, coming in at two and a quarter inch by three and an eighth. Now, Topps Mini was going to get an RC designation until I came across some interesting facts. Here's what made me change my mind. Boxes were available for sale exclusively at the Topps corporate booth at the 2012 National Sports Collectors Convention held in Baltimore and on the Topps website. Interestingly enough, three days later, they were completely sold out between the um, convention and their online sale. Apparently, somebody bought the remaining 341 boxes all in a single purchase. A longtime hobby standard is a rookie card must come from a product that is allocated in pack form and distributed nationally. So because of distribution, it disqualifies this one from being a true rookie card. Here we have a legitimate true rookie card of Bryce Harper in the 2012 Topps Triple Threats, a fantastic card that features an autograph, a piece of memorabilia, and rarity with only 99 copies made. Also, I want to address the 2012 Topps update. Here he has two cards numbered US 183 and US 299. These I do not consider true rookie cards for this very reason. Commandment number eight. A player's rookie card that is part of an update or traded set and was distributed in pack form nationally must not have any other cards issued within that same product line. Friends, the Tops update is an extension of the flagship Tops. Therefore, we've already determined his true rookie card in the flagship product. So, after filtering all 788 cards of Bryce Harper, released between 2008 and 2012, these 12 cards fit the criteria of a true rookie card. They were produced after Harper debuted in the MLB. They are properly licensed. They are branded with a rookie card identifier on the card front. They are part of the base set. And the cards came in pack form and were distributed nationally. And it is for these five reasons that they are 100% true rookie cards. I hope we were able to remove any confusion, doubt, or frustration. And I hope we were able to bring a little bit more clarity. Now, this channel and my website, truerookiecards.com, are all about rookie cards. We look at its past and present day status, all in an effort to better understand this hobby icon. Now, let's get to some closing statements. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video as we took a deep dive into the rookie cards of a potential Hall of Famer. Do me a favor, if you like the content I'm creating, please support this channel by tapping that like button. Also, leave me a comment on who was your pick for the National League MVP. Was it Soto, Tatis, or did you like someone else entirely? And let me know which Harper rookie card is your favorite. I'd love to know. If you'd like, I'm going to leave you my last video on this side, or I'm going to leave you my favorite video, which is the origins of the rookie card. I'll leave you a link to that one on this side. Until next time, I'll catch you on the next one.